Red Cup Toba Brands. Let's get into it. Guys and gals, how are you doing? Let's get into it. We got some stuff to talk about today. This, today, this, today, this, today. Wow. Hi. Um, Red Cup Talk with Brian Adams. Let's get into it. No, we're not getting into it. Just hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so you can be up to date with content as I drop it. Let's grow this channel together. Come on, Adams family. So I really don't know how this um, video is going to go tonight. I'm not sure if it's going to be a short one or a long one. I was trying to condense it down, but stuff just kept coming up. Stuff kept coming up. Um, stuff that I wanted to bring to one's attention. And as I was producing this, I wanted to, this video, I wanted to actually make sure I get it right. And not necessarily down to a T, because I'm not there yet. I get it. But just to make sure I get most things that I critique on right for the things I can control. In Florida, the hurricanes, hopefully the hurricanes are over. I know they say hurricane season is like from, what, June to November. So hopefully that last hurricane that burst through, uh, what was that? Um, that would be the last one. Not Helen, but the, was it Hurricane Helen? Well, not the Helen. There's so many of them. I just can't, can't keep up with so many different names. But anyway, so, um, yeah, man, we got some things to talk about. I wanted to get into, before we get started, I wanted to go ahead and give the props out to one of my, I don't know why. I, I just, for some reason, I favor this couple. I have did a video before, the, before on them. I'm really not a big basketball person, but my sport was always boxing. Boxing and football, the rough stuff, but... Nonetheless, Brittany and her wife, Sherelle, uh, I did a short on them recently that they, uh, you know, they just had a baby recently and the baby name is Bash. It's a baby boy they had. And um, congratulations to you again. Congratulations is an, is an order. Um, and then the, that name is really cool. I like the name. I said that in the short. I really like that name, Bash. And all the best to you guys. Uh, Brittany was uh, quoted saying that she didn't, you know, she wasn't going to let her son call her mom. So that's what the video, the short I made on. Um, and that's cool. I mean, hey, I say this, whatever you do in your household, as long as it's not hurting the child or the, the loved one that you're, you know, you're caring for, then, hey, more power to you and, and be consistent with it. You know, if you're going to do this, be consistent with it. If you're going to be pops, be pops, but always be pops, even when you're mad or you're you know, always be pops, you know, because you that can confuse a child that didn't ask to be here or come into this world um, at this time, during this time. So just be consistent with it and all the best to you, you know, to you, Brittany, and to Sherelle. Um, hopefully I get to meet you guys one day. I like that couple. I hope they stay together and make more babies and um, more success to you. Brittany, with your career at the WNBA, uh, yeah. And I saw the pictures of that big, beautiful house you had, you guys have too. That's gorgeous, nice pool, everything. Y'all look like y'all having fun. So I'm not gonna sit here and, and, and um, say wench over here too much on you guys, but just all the best to you, you know? All the best to you in, in parenthood. And yeah, so we're gonna keep it moving. Keep it moving right along, guys. Um, Russell Wilson and Sierra. <laughs> Russell Wilson and Sierra. Now, there's a rumor. This, and the reason I'm going to keep this in the category as rumored because up until the time I made this video, I still couldn't find anything on to confirm that this is uh, true, that uh, Sierra is pregnant with baby number five and six. I don't know why it's twins involved they could have just said it's pregnant baby number five but they said five and six so I'm, i looked it up i seen some of the pictures i could see how they could say that maybe she's pregnant but in this day and time she couldn't she could very well just it could just be the way the picture was the way the the, the clothes on her was flowing that day it could have been she could have um i don't know what do i eat that 
blow. She could have ate a lot of watermelon or something. <laughs> Cause I know when I eat watermelon, it makes my stomach puffy puffy for a few, for like an hour, a couple of hours or so. If I eat certain salads, like with chicken in it, roasted chicken or something, uh, 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 grilled chicken in it, um, it'll do that. So, I mean, depending on what she ate that day, you know, they rich. They got all kinds of money, man. They probably eat stuff that we ain't never even heard of. And never will hear of, you know what I'm saying? So, go on and back down off of them. If they are pregnant, all the best to you in the Wilson's household. Uh, that's Russell and Sierra Wilson. <laughs> no, I'm not mess her name up like that. Um, I get it. She's just Sierra as an R&B singer. So I'm going to give her a prompts. All the best to you, Sierra, if you are pregnant. And all the best to you, Russell Wilson, if you guys are expecting twins. Definitely, definitely. And this would be five and six if there's twins. If there's just one baby, it would be five. But nonetheless, all the best to you, and it's okay. Uh, we Time will tell. Time tells everything. It's going to tell the truth anyway. So regardless whether it's they're trying to keep it hidden or not. Remember how Beyonce, that situation was when she had the baby bump. She was at the ward and supposedly eat a cake bowl that she had in her stomach or something popped out. I don't know. I, 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 Cause I didn't watch the ward, but I remember hearing the gossip about you know what was going on with her. So, and was she really pregnant? I don't know if she really was pregnant, but I know she did have a baby. Beyonce got a few kids now, her and Jay-Z. And they do have a set of twins, so. I don't know. Maybe with the fertilization issues, uh, things now, not issues, but the fertilization things nowadays, you can pick and choose what sex you want and if you want to have single or if you want to have twins. Or triplets, for that matter, I'm assuming. If you can pick all that, it's like you can pick as many as you want to have or try to have, you know, because it's really up to Mother Nature, well, up to, to God, it's up to, to the higher power. Um, we really can't control it. We can only do things to stimulate and suggest, you know, with our bodies. But that's about it on that. Like I said, Russell Wilson. And even if she is pregnant, how would she have? That's what I wanted to say, too, because I remember I spoke on that in the, in the short. See, I was just on tour with uh, Missy Elliott, and they're touring all over the world. And how did she have time to have a baby? I mean, you, when you go on tour, you're promoting it. You're taking pictures. You're promoting. You're doing radio shows. You're doing morning shows. You're doing afternoon shows and evening shows and your concerts. And when, honestly, do you have the time to sit there and make a baby? I know it don't take that much. It don't take nothing but a second for some. But for the most part, I just want to you know, throw that out there. All the best to you. All the best to you. Moving right along. We're Diddy. I did a show on Diddy Party. Diddy versus uh, Dr. Umar. Dr. Umar said that um, Diddy parties is no different than Hugh Hefner's parties from the 70s and 80s. And first of all, I want to say, Dr. Umar, where is the uh, where's the school at? Before we get started, where is the school at? And the reason I say that is because I'm big on nonprofit. A lot of people that don't know me know that I came from the nonprofit sector. My very first job was nonprofit. So I always have an eye and a love, a passion for nonprofit. Um... So I, I say that to say that I understand that one time you was getting, you know, getting up money and funds for this school that was supposed to have been built. Where's the school at? We ain't seen nothing to it. At one point, I was gonna donate. I was because I, when I once I realized and, and 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 looked it up and saw what you were talking about, I was like, okay, well, here's a school. He's trying to educate for Christ's sake, and we do need more educational systems out here for these up and coming students, you know, young adults. So. At one point, I was going to donate to it. Um, but I said I wanted to wait first to see the cornerstones and see the structure and see, you know, the foundation and all that stuff. And It takes a lot for me. I don't know if it's a tourist in me or what, but it takes a lot for me when it comes to going into my wallet and just pushing out money like that. Now, as far as I'm, I'm out there in the mall and I'm going to see a pair of shoes or... Oh, a nice 
watch or you know, a pair of, a, a, a nice pair of shoes. I like a nice pair of shoes, tennis shoes, you know, a nice pair of tennis. So I see that that's something different. But I mean, you come knocking at my door and you're telling me that you got some non-profit items that you're trying to get off and off your plate. Uh, like I said, it's going to heighten my, my attention because I'm into non-profit. That was a key word that, you know, draw me in. But what are you doing with it? What are you doing? What are you doing with all that money? Because I'm not sure how much you got it because I wasn't tracking it. But I mean, like I said, you had something that was all out there talking about nonprofit. What's going on with the school? That's all I ask. Now, back to this. Um, Hugh Hefner parties, from what I remember back in the I wasn't, of course, I wasn't privy, pity to be back then, be in that era back then. But from what I remember hearing and, and seeing on TV and footage, Hugh Hefner had party parties, like they were open, I, I'm not going to say open to the public, but they had performers there, um, the Gap Band, I think, performed there before, um, Sly and the Family Stone performed before, before there, I Can Tina Turner Band performed there, um, there was a lot of stuff we had, we, we knew about the, the Hugh Hefner parties back then. These Diddy parties, if it wasn't for Cassie blowing up, blowing up, um, dropping a bomb, so to speak, or, 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 or all this crazy, all this stuff, this, all this fiasco that's been going on, we wouldn't have known about Diddy parties. I mean, we heard about the the all the Diddy parties, let alone, I don't even think that we knew that, that they had all white parties. He had all white. Yeah, we did know about the all white parties because he would promote those. And the Jay-Z's, back then, the Jay-Z, the 4040 Club and all that. I remember all that, but I don't even know if he still had the 4040 Club. But I uh, remember all that back then. Um, coming to D.C., uh, Washington, D.C. at the time, and throwing parties at Dream Night Club. Our homecoming activities um, that always took place. Uh, we knew about the Diddy parties, but... How can I say? I don't think that that's a good comparison, Dr. Umar. I don't think that's a good comparison, Doc. <laughs> Hugh Hefner and Diddy parties are not on the same. I don't think that's a good comparison. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave leave it on that note. Uh, they both parties, I get it, but that's no different than comparing a Diddy party to a, a party out in the south side of DMV or something like that, or a party out PG County and out in Bowie somewhere. I mean... A party is a party. So I don't think that that's a good comparison to Diddy and Hugh Hefner. I am going to have to say that I, I don't agree with that one. But nonetheless, I mean, if that's what you want to compare it to, hey, like I said, I'm just out here to report the business. Uh, my opinion really don't don't really count that much, but I just wanted to get into it and let you know why I stood with it. Um, Before we get going further into the conversation, because that's all it is, this conversation we're having right now, right? <laughs> get out there and register to vote. If you haven't registered to vote, register to vote. If you have not voted, vote. Get ready to vote because it's coming. It's coming. We have, we're less than a month away, and this is very important this time around. If you don't know who to vote for, God damn it, I'm going to tell you who to vote for. Vote for Kamala. Tell him B sent you. <laughs> and you're coming, and you want to check the box next to Kamala. I said it. I always used to say in the video. I said it. <laughs> Somebody even said, vote. Uh, all his people on his side is they, they they doing it that way. So come on. If you don't know who to vote for, get out there and vote for Kamala. Right along, moving right along. MC Light take in your dingsy box. What can I say? Hey, thanks a lot, because I flipped and tripped and did all that good shit. The right of, they can't get off my tip. They know who show this is. Who show is this? This is MC Light. Act like you know. Y'all remember that? This is MC Light. Act like you know. Like I said, I'm in the DM. Bringing this solo. Enjoy my freedom. Turn the radio on. Nothing but weak rap. Slap a tape. And that's where it's at. Look up at the sky and I see hip hop. No, I forgot. I messed up. Anyway, MC Light was on the Sharon Shepard show recently, y'all. And uh, she was looking fly as ever. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. Gotta watch your gotta get a rough neck. She said, 
pissing in the corners, doing 80 by funeral mornings, showing a little respect, but that's a rough neck. But anyway, MC Light was on Sherry Shepard recently, and I wanted to say, uh, she got a new album out. Check it out. MC Light back in the day wore Nike. I was a big MC Light fan. I loved MC Light. I was a big MC Light fan before anybody else knew. I thought I knew a Biggie Smell before I knew of all uh, Tupac, all that. Uh, it was M C Light. And she was a big cusser too. She would cuss your mother f at out. <laughs> and the rap battle, he <laughs> can keep it flowing. That's just how she was. She used to hang out at the skating rink back in Brooklyn. You know, the, the, uh, the roller disco where they all used to go back, used to have some fun back in 1981. You know, the place Empire Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> when she first met the nigga and she tried to play hard, but uh yeah, um cram to understand you. I cram to understand you. Uh oh man, Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. MC Light was big back then. She's big now. Uh she's married, she got divorced. Um she talked about I don't know, she stole Mary J. Blog boots, but she talked or borrowed them or something, but she talked about when she was partying with Mary J. Blige and Missy Elliott one night, all of them was having a good time, Kiki and I guess it was one of their birthdays, and Mary J. Blige's boots got missing. <laughs> she ain't gonna say stolen, but she's gonna say missing. And Mary J. Blige knocked at the door and was like, Light! This is Mary J. <laughs> I think you got my boots. <laughs> she had the boots. She said she put them outside the door and was like, I am so sorry. Um, yeah, so, yeah, um, MC Light was the first female to have a, a full album, full rap album back then, and I think it was the one to go gold. I don't want to get it mixed up with The Brat, because I know The Brat was the first female rap to go platinum, I think, because she talks about that a lot, and, um, she mentioned that quite often from the Ricky Smiley Show and the, uh, Dish Nation, which she, she announces. I've seen her once perform. She opened for Criss Cross back in the day uh, at the Capitol Center in Washington, back in Maryland. Was it the Capitol Center? I think it was the Capitol Center. And um, this is before she had Roughneck. She was doing, no, this is before she was doing Keep It In I think she was doing Roughneck. I think she did that. But you know, the, at the uh, single she did with uh, Escape, Keep On Keep Keeping It On Cause You Came. That was one of her big hits too. But that, that uh, I don't think she was, she had that song out yet. Cause, no, she didn't. She was doing like Poor Georgie, all the other rap stuff. She gave a good show. For her to be a little girl, a little, back then she was a little, and she's still small, a little skinny girl, but back then she was really small. And I just remember she was a cusser. She cussed a lot. I do remember that. She was a big cusser. She might not cuss now, but... And I... Oh, side note. I haven't listened to the album, but of course, after I do this video, uh, my next work schedule, I'm going to definitely be listening to that whole album. So I might get a, give a review on that later on just to let you know. Stay... All the MC Light fans and the, uh, the fans from that rap era, stay tuned for that because I think I'm going to do that too once I hear it. But, um, yeah, MC Lay, I'm going to give you your flowers, girl. Uh, you doing your thing, mama. I keep doing it. Uh, I hope this new album really says off. She mentioned that she has, uh, Stevie Wonder graced it, graced the, the album. He did a song with her on it. So, um, she talked about that in the Sherry Shepard show. They were excited about that. Um, and he gave a little extra as far as the melodic, uh, tuning that they needed it to have. She gave it a nice... What she said, pretty much. And I know Stevie Wonder style, because I like Stevie Wonder, too. He really is. He's he not going to do you wrong, because his name is on it. So, I can't wait. I'm going to listen to that album. I'm going to take it there. I'm going to find out what I need to pick and choose out of it. And uh, I hope you guys listen to it like it as well, if you if you do get a chance to uh, check it out. Speaking of albums, Glorilla. Glorilla, Glorilla has an album um, out, uh, Glorious, and I listened to parts of that. Then that was nice. I heard about that because, um, what's his name from The Breakfast Club? Uh, Charlemagne the God from The Breakfast, Breakfast Club. I was listening to them the other morning, and they had mentioned that um, he said that the album, some of the songs, one of the songs almost had him in tears. And I get it, because it do kind of give you a gospel feel. He said that he thinks this is a classic for her. This is going to be a classic album. I don't know about that. I probably got to listen to it again. But... 
I mean, I guess if you can get past your flow, Glorilla flow, because Glorilla does have a different flow. It kind of reminds me of um, that guy from, they used to rap with Lil Wayne and um, Silk the Shocker. Remember Silk the Shocker? I remember people always say his flow was like off. He used to rap off beat, so to speak. But it got to the point that when he wasn't on a track, you missed him. Because you were so used to hearing him, his hearing his little flow and his little. So that kind of when I think when I listen to some of the songs of Glorilla's album, new album, I thought of, I put me in my frame of Silk the Shocker. I'm not saying that she's rapping off beat. I'm not saying that, but her delivery is a little different. It's kind of like chopped, but she does get a point across, and I and I like that. I like the the style that the the, the producers who she's working with the producers, they are really. Taking, they've taken her material to. She's international, scene like more so where it's just like a, where you're just like Little Kim, where only the people in the hood know you. And I hate to say that about Little Kim because I think I think that's the only thing they messed up messed her up with, with marketing her, back when she first came out. Now she's you know she's trying to get out entertaining and um, internationally. But I know for a long time they didn't do her like they did Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj, and like I said, Glorilla now. Um, they're doing them in, in international. They're just, they're, like I said, they're not just making the flow of the beats just for the neighborhood, so to speak, just for the urban community. They're, they're making it pop. They're making it out there so that people can want to listen to it and buy it. And I get it. You know, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, that's good production. So all the best to you, Glorilla. Um, like I said, I heard some of the, the some of this music, um, some of the tracks on it. And I wanted to say, oh, Lord, when I was listening to it, because I was like, wow, girl. Um, yeah, she got some good stuff on it. Um, oh, and she has Kirk Franklin on it as well. She has Kirk, Glorilla has Kirk Franklin on her album. I was like in the, in the room the other day when I was listening to one of the songs. I was like, is that Kirk? Yeah, that's Kirk Franklin. Wow. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and she did a good job. She didn't make me want to turn it off like, okay, no, this is not what I had in mind because some people, well, with, I can't say speak for others, but I know with me, when I want to hear gospel, I want to hear gospel. When I want to hear jazz, I want to hear jazz. When I want to hear hip hop, I want to hear hip hop. And when I don't want to hear all that stuff and I just want to just flow with something, that's when I put on some pop music. I put pop on in a minute. I love uh, rock and roll, uh, you know, I, I love it all. I, I'm into music. I'm really a music. I can sit here and listen to music all day before I watch TV, and that's the truth. But um, so I, but but just, like I said, with this, whoever produced it, they didn't give off that I'm trying to bring in. They just tattered with it a little bit. Gossip. Even though I'm saying that Kirk Frank was on it, I know you know Kirk Frank is He likes to get in and dominate and. You know, he really gives a good show and gives a good performance. He gives, he's going to give you, he's going to let you know he's in the building. Kirk Franklin is going to let you know he's there. But with this, they tone it down. Um, Stop playing, uh, which is hot. Uh, I would just try to just jot down notes, but she really did a good job with this album. She did. Like I said, I got to hear it again. I don't know um, if it's classic status or not. I would, less, like I said, I got to hear it again and really get into it, but when you think of classics, I think of Nas. When people say classic, I think of I think Nas, I think the MC Lights, I think the LL Cool J's, I think the Big Daddy Kane's, I think, um, yeah, those, they, the people of that time. Even Ice Cube, I can even go on the West Coast and throw some Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, those are classics. You know, you're gonna hear them and anybody can hear them. Old people can hear them, but like, I remember what I was doing back in that day when I was, that's a classic, to me. You know, people's versions of classics are different. But a classic is something that you can listen to 10, 15 years from now and it'll still live on. Like when I finish this video, I can go and get in my car and drive off and play Dr. Dre's The Chronic album and still don't feel like I'm out of place. And people around me would know who I'm listening to. That's a classic, you know? I'm not saying that album's not. I'm just saying that I haven't heard enough on it to, to put her in that category yet. Radio personality and DJ Big Tigger had a baby is having a baby at age 51. This is his first child. I know there's a small percentage of 
men out there between the age of 40 and 55 that don't have kids, that's straight, that just decided they didn't want to have kids at a young age and they don't have kids yet for whatever reason. They can have kids, they're straight, and they, for whatever reason, they don't have kids. They still date women and they date women. They probably even married women, but they don't have kids and they can have kids. I'm speaking to that percentage because it's, it's a specific, it's a percentage of you guys out there. I'm part of it. Well, no, I'm not part of it, but I'm speaking to the guys out there. <laughs> no, no, I'm really being uh, specific right now. I'm really being specific right now. The ones that are in that category, watch it because as a man, we can always have a baby. We can always produce. I don't give a damn how old we are. Even when we die, they can still scoop some of our stuff out of us and put that as, hey, we can still have a baby. We can always have a baby for the rest of our life. So keep that in mind. I don't want you, you know, you thinking that you're a certain age, you might not can do no more, or da la la la. I'm gonna go ahead and do this and do that and do that and slip up. And it is people that have known. It's men that be not, that's known to have babies at uh, 55 and 60 years old and more and older. So and it's actors for Christ's sake. I haven't. I, I didn't really write up a list or anything, but there are actors known that have babies after 50 and 55. So I say this to say, not be careful, but just be mindful that you can still have a baby. All right. All right. All the best to you, um, DJ Big Ticker, uh, with you and your, your new baby coming. Uh, all the best to you. At 51, so he's going to be almost 70 when that baby graduates. Going to graduation. I mean, who knows? Like nowadays they're saying that the new seventies is the sixties, new sixties is the fifties, new fifties is the forties, and new how'd that go? New four. One person said the fifties is the twenties. I said, nah, you're reaching now, man. <laughs> the fifties is not the new fifties is not the twenties. No, take that back. No, no, your ass is just the new fifties. Get put that on them twenty year olds. Don't do that to them. Get your ass out there and vote. <laughs> but yeah, all the best to you out there, um, DJ Big Ticket. All the best to you, honestly, because um, you're gonna need it at 51, and you're raising a baby in this time and era. In this era, you're gonna need all the blessings and everything with that, and the patience, everything. So, all the best to you, um, and. I hope he keeps us up on his journey so that we can follow and see how that goes for him. Because I'm very interested to know, at 51, your first child, you had all that time. You party, 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 or whatever you did, you were able to not have kids up until 51. All the best to you. All the best to you. And everything you do at 51. All right, well, I want to wrap it up. Um... This has been it for me. I'm going to get to the point and I'm going to tell the point that uh, we're done here. This is it. I've wrapped it up. I, I, I thought it was going to take a long one. And it's what, 30, we were almost 20, almost 30 minutes in, but I'm going to try to slice some of this down some. So uh, stay tuned for the announcements. That's all I can say. And until next time, peace. If you have any special announcements coming up, birthdays, anniversaries, or even a divorce. Who knows how you celebrate in your household? Drop me a line. Or if you just want to just send me a note and say hi. Or suggestions, how to build this channel up, or uh, anything that you've seen or, or think that I should add or, or take away. Uh, I would like to hear your suggestions. Your opinion matters over here. So send me an email. You'll find an email uh, in my description below, but I also wanted to verbally give it to you as well. Email to me at smalltalkwithbadams at gmail.com. That's all one word, smalltalkwithbadams at gmail.com. Let's grow this channel together. See you later, family. I have a family. Peace.